Uh, welcome to today's NTOP live session. We're going to be talking about uh, the Voronoi capabilities inside of NTOP platform. Uh, we're going to be using this helmet uh, as our example. And we're going to go through uh, all the different things in the complete control that you really have of Voronoi's inside of NTOP. Uh, so today we're going to take this helmet, which was actually initially imported as a mesh after doing some simulation work in LS Dyna to do some impact. We have a mesh that we were able to bring in. And we're going to use this mesh to apply our Voronoi structure. Now, we converted that to an NTOP body into our native implicit format, and we were able to do a couple different things with it. Now, our Voronoi puts random points on a mesh. So we took our mesh, and I actually took just the inside face of this mesh because I only wanted this Voronoi ribbing we're going to create to be on the inside surface. What we needed to do to create these four noise is use our random points on mesh block. As you can see, it populates random points on this mesh as evenly spaced as possible. Now you have total control of how many points you can put on this mesh. I have it at 2000 right now. We can change it to 1000. It's gonna rerun it for you. You can change it to 10. You can change it to whatever you need. And this really gives you control of the sizing and the spacing and the conformalness of those Voronois that we're going to create. We're going to put it back to 2000. Now you'll see this prompt here called relaxation iterations. And this tames the randomness of these Voronois. And I'll show you that here. Once we put our random points on a mesh into our Voronoi boundary lattice block, it creates our Voronois. You can see they really closely resemble those honeycomb shapes that people really, really enjoy, but they also have that randomness to allow them to conform to your geometry. And this is conforming to the inside of our helmet here. You can see it. it's a little bit difficult, but you can tell that it's conforming to that helmet geometry that we have. Now, I mentioned this point count again to show you what happens when you change it to 1,000 from 2,000. This war noise get much, much larger. We go back to 2,000 and we change our relax iteration, relaxation iterations. Now, you're going to see this is going to order itself a little bit more. So we'll go to a thousand just for demonstration purposes. Now this is going to take a little bit of time because it's trying to order all that randomness that we're creating, but in a conformal way. And it's going to really give us a really great result that resembles a conformal honeycomb as close as possible, which is pretty difficult. Let's throw this down a little bit. Oh, there we go. Let's go back to 30. And now we're gonna take this and we're gonna go a step further with it. Where this is, we'll call it uniform for now, where these are as evenly sized as it possibly can make them. We don't need to leave it at that. We have all of these spots of geometry here, where here, where it has ventilation for the padding and to cool down the player's head and everything like that. And maybe we know these need a little bit more structural integrity. So we wanna have a little bit more for noise closer to those areas, what we can do is take geometry around those areas and use it to spatially weight, meaning we're going to put way smaller Voronois and more of them here just to increase the strength at that point. So you can see around all of those points that I was talking about, all those ventilation holes, we have a tighter, more dense Voronois structure. Now, again, we denoted inside of here that we wanted to change from this side, one size to another, but we only have 2,000 points. So it's going to take a little bit of an average there to do its best while still maintaining 2,000 points exactly. So if you know if you know that these points a little here are a little bit too big, you know, put it up a little bit, let it rerun. It's going to do it for you again and calculate it, and it'll order those a little bit better. Now, we have a, a Voronoi structure that's not just conformal, not only not uniform, but it's ramped. It's optimized in a way. We can take this even further inside of NTOP. Not only can we change how many unit cells you have given its space, we can change the thickness and the height of these. As a demonstration, we can take this, turn these beams that we had into a rib lattice. And it's a little bit hard to view here, but what we did is we thickened these up all one millimeter. So now we have a uniform thickness on those ribs that we created. And we're gonna take this even further where we want the height of these to change, not just from, let me switch to this guy, not just from <coughs> spacing, but also we can change how tall they get. It's a little bit difficult to see here, but 
we have a very varying height as well. We'll get there in just a minute. We don't have to just change the height of these structures. We can also control the thickness. But right now I've applied a uniform thickness. So every single one of these beams is one millimeter thick. We wanna take it further. We wanna go ahead and ramp it so that at the ends here, at these termination points, it goes to near zero thickness just to really, really take it a step further. And you can see that here where these are changing not only thickness here, but also height. Now we've created this very complex, very optimized structure in about the past two minutes. And that's really awesome. And all of this, all of this work that we've done here so far is still reusable, like I like to talk about inside of Anton, where if we come back to these C points here and we say, you know what, we need more of them. Let's, let's say 3000, we wanna have a little bit of a tighter structure. It's gonna rerun all of these steps that we've created here, every single one of them. And it's gonna give us that thickened, ramped, optimized output that we've spent this entire time creating. So now we have an even different structure and we can go again, we can change relaxation iterations. We can change this again, just until you get that final design that you want. And it's gonna do it all for you. You don't have to do every step again. Now this is pretty bad because I forgot a zero, but we can fix that just that easily. All right, while this is rerunning, we can wait, we can hang out, you can have a drink, you need to do whatever you need to do. Don't have to sit here and do everything, bash your head against the wall or anything like that. We have that reroun for us, ready to go. Now, what do you do with this? This is really complex. How can we, how can we make this usable? Well, once we have it in this form and we're happy with it, we can convert it to our native implicit format with the use of just one block and union it back together with this initial helmet geometry. And so we go into this block here, you can see I have joined these two together. They are one single part. This is now a finished part. You could take this, you could mesh it, you could export it, you could use FEA on it. You could put it back into LSDyne and do some you know, dynamic impact testing. You could do whatever you need to do with it. You could slice it, you could print it, you could get it ready, you can do anything. This is in our format, ready to go, it's one piece. If we take a look on the inside here, it's just our rendering. This looks a little bit muddy. Don't worry about our rendering. If we come here, do a control H, it's gonna do a full render for us. And you're gonna see the perfect most perfect representation of your part that you can have. You can see we have these varying from large to small unit cells, tall to, to shorter where we ramp the height and from thick to thin all at the same time. And it took us not even 10 total minutes. And that's really awesome. We changed it, I don't know, maybe six or seven times and it redid everything for us. And that's really, really awesome, really, really powerful. This is one way you could use the Voronois inside of NTOP. Uh, you know, you could do this for aesthetic purposes as well, because they do look really awesome, really cool. Uh, you could use it for a couple different things, and you have just total control of these foreign noise structures inside of NTOP. Um, one thing I'd love to mention, uh, we used a lot of these ramp blocks inside of here, and that's how we get, get this done. Uh, if you need any more information on that, we have stuff up on our website. Uh, if you want to see more of the videos that we've been doing like this NTOP Live, if you go to our website, Come here to our video section. All of our previous NTOP lives are up already with their files. Um, you can even tune into the ones we're doing three a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Please tune in. We would uh, love to have more people come into these and ask really good questions like you guys have been doing. Um, on the 14th, we have for EDU people, we're having like an ask me anything style. Uh, so if you guys are EDU, please come join that. Uh, on the 23rd, we're having NTOP Essentials where we don't just show you the things you can do, we show you how to do them, the essentials of NTOP, we're calling it NTOP Essentials. Um, I have a lot of this stuff coming up, so please keep an eye on your emails where we're sending out what's coming up this week. Tune in, uh, we'd love to have you. If you have any questions about what I showed you here with these Voronoi capabilities, please throw them in the Q&A or the chat section. Be happy to answer some. If I don't get to them, I apologize. We will do our best to get to those. Uh, okay. So first question is, why doesn't the conformal honeycomb look like uniform honeycomb? Uh, he saw that there were some disconnected honeycomb on certain sizes. How can we overcome that? Uh, you overcome that by tuning your parameters. If you have disconnected parts, like when I accidentally put 200 here, if we go back to just viewing this, where I put 200, that's not nearly 
enough points for this to get a truly good result and answer like this is this isn't what you want it's not good enough where you have these disconnected regions because there's a hole here in the helmet and it just looks like there's a beam missing but there's there's holes there that it just can't interpolate around with those points so there just wasn't enough points where if we throw it back to 2000 uh 2000 here you'll see that it's going to fix that issue because it's going to put more points around that hole so it's not just leaving it there these aren't just disconnected parts there's actually nothing there uh, let me double check i'm not missing any questions here i want to make sure i get to all you guys And as I mentioned, uh, we have a lot more of these coming up. So if you guys weren't able to attend today, you're watching us on the website, please check check our weekly email that we're sending out. Uh, join in, we'd love to have you. And we import our own pattern. Well, in this case, these are Voronoi, so they're it's mathematically created from the points we put um, earlier. I don't know how exactly putting your own pattern would work, but I'm sure you could come up with a way to do that. Uh, if you want to do this for yourself, this file that I've created here will be posted with the videos at that spot on our website. If you go to anthropology.com, go to our videos with our end up lives. This video will be posted here with this uh, file that I have here. So you can check out all the steps I did here. You can take a look at all the RAMs and everything I used. This will all be given to you and provided to you so you can really understand what's happening here on the inside. All right. Well, uh, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, I'm going to end this stream here, uh, but please tune into our future ones. Thank you very much.